Here's what's coming up on this episode of the Venus Cuckoldress podcast. That was a good, a good introduction. And you know what? I, I, I never went back. I <laughs> literally never went back. That's absolutely 100% true for me. That's all I like. That's what I crave. That's what I want. And then I have the traditional just black queen of spades with the white Q inside of it. And that is uh, right above my pussy. <gasps> no! <laughs> we have the same tattoo in the same place? Oh my God. You have the, you have the, just the original one? Yes! <laughs> I will get what Pip has termed uh, black dick drunk. And I will just start fucking and forget that I am doing content. Like, I need to look at the camera. I need to, you know, yes, like squeezing onto him really tight and grinding and riding hard might feel great. But, you know, people want to see my boobs. Like, I can't do that for 30 straight minutes no matter how much I want to. The empowerment that comes with it really gives you gives you a confidence uh, that maybe you didn't even know you were lacking. You already felt like you were a very powerful woman, but this is in a different way. And being powerful sexually is very gratifying, very freeing, and should be experienced by all women. And I don't think that it is. Yeah. So if you're thinking about this and you're kind of on the fence, maybe take the perspective of, you know, I am in control. You are now listening to the Venus Cuckoldress podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious, the passionate, and the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Go to venuscuckoldress.com to subscribe to the podcast, ask a question for the show, and find the elusive Venus Vault, a sneak peek behind the bedroom door. Now sit back, make yourself comfortable, and let's dive right into this episode. Welcome to this episode of the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast. I'm your host, Venus, and y'all ready for this? <laughs> this is awesome. I'm so happy to have her on the show. Today's episode is Miss Harmony California. She is legendary. She is just amazing. She's a part-time adult film actress and a full-time fucking badass cuckoldress queen of spades. And yeah, she's going to talk a little bit about what it's like to be an adult film actress in this cuckold cuckolding lifestyle, but also she is going to talk about her cuckolding relationship, which is pretty cool that she does both of those things. So this episode is dropping on Saturday, September 3rd, and on Sunday, September 4th, Harmony is going to join me on the Moan app for a live audio event. And that's going to happen at 4 p.m. Central Time. And so that's Sunday, 4 p.m. Central Time, live on the Moan app, where we're going to talk about all things cuckolding, Queen of Spades, this episode, all that fun stuff, her relationship, all, whatever. We're, we're just going to talk about it. It's going to be a ton of fun. So I hope you can join us. You have to catch it live, 4 p.m., Central Time, Sunday the 4th on the Moan app. If you haven't downloaded the Moan app, you really need to. You're missing out. It's the Moan, M-O-N app. You just search it up in the App Store, the Google Play Store, whatever the hell. And once you've logged in and created a profile and followed me, of course, <laughs> then you can see the event there and you can get notifications directly in the app. 
Oh, and it's totally free. So you don't have to worry about that. And before I forget, actually, hold up, hold up. This is good. <laughs> so Harmony and I, we recorded rapid fire naughty questions. <laughs> so what was that? That was just like a lot of really fast questions about all sorts of naughty questions. And it was, let me tell you, so much fun. <laughs> And I recorded it as bonus content for my Patreon subscribers. So if you support the podcast on Patreon, then you get access to that awesome little bit of bonus content with myself and Harmony. If you want to support the podcast, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Venus Cuckoldress. And of course, the link is in the show notes for today. One other thing that I have been doing with Patreon is the Helpful Cuck tier, which I've said before, and I'll say it again, is so much fucking fun for me. It is so great to have help with the things that I need help with. So if you want to sign up and you want to have like more interaction and feel helpful and useful for me, I obviously appreciative. Go to Patreon, sign up for the Helpful Cuck tier, and you get live hangouts once a week, which are super awesome. Um, The next one is booked for Saturday. September 3rd. It's at 11 a.m. Pacific time on Crowdcast. And it's where I'm on video and everybody else just gets to like hang out in the audience, ask questions, chat together, whatever. It's super chill. It's super fun. This is going to be a Saturday chill where we can all just have chill, fun, intimate conversations. And it's going to be a really great way to kick off your weekend. Oh, and I added key holding to the helpful cuck tier. (laughs) So I was like, why not? That would be fun. (laughs) So if you want me to hold your keys, you can send them to me (laughs) if you sign up for the helpful cuck tier on Patreon. All right, that's it for announcements. Let's jump into the show. But first, I just want to say regarding announcements, there's going to be some really big announcements coming up this month, September. Okay, so stay tuned. I cannot wait. (laughs) There are going to be huge announcements. So yeah, there you go. Suspense, cliffhanger. (laughs) All right, now let's jump into today's episode with Harmony California. Here we go. All right. Welcome to the show. This is one of like the most well-known adult film actresses in this lifestyle slash full-time cuckoldress, queen of spades, legendary superstar uh, (laughs) in this lifestyle. So I'm so happy to have you on the show. Welcome, Harmony. Say hello to all the fans. Oh, hello, everybody. And thank you so much, Venus. I am a long time listener, but first time guest. (laughs) Yes. Awesome. All right. So, oh my gosh, the first time I heard about you was, uh, it had to be like within the first year that I had learned about this lifestyle. And I was talking to some guy and he was like, yeah, so the reason why I, I'm totally into all of this is because of Harmony California. And I was like, oh, I don't know who that is. He's like, Dude, she's so cool. Like, she's actually in a cuckolding relationship, and she makes, uh, like, these porn videos. And I was like, oh, really? Because, like, you, I just, I don't know. I don't know why I never thought that, like, you'd get both of those together. Um, but... So I remembered the name Harmony California, and I th- I wish I remember exactly what he said and what who he was, <laughs> but I don't remember. But I think he said something about like Queen of Spades, and he might have said something about a Queen of Spades tattoo. I don't know, but anyway, I was like thoroughly intrigued. So I've seen your name come up here and there since then, and I was like, I would always look at it and be like, oh, that's her. <laughs> That's who I heard about way back in the beginning. So you've been around in this lifestyle for longer than me, longer than most people, I think. And just fucking blazing your trail through this lifestyle and making it like your own for you and your partner. So I'm so excited to talk to you to get your story and share it with everybody. Cause I'm sure tons of people have already heard about you and watched your videos and your content and everything like that. So this is just so exciting for me. So you are a queen of spades cuckoldress. 
and you do uh what do you call it like porn or adult film videos like what's the proper name for it on <laughs> honestly it, it really doesn't matter to me i mean i say i make porn but i'm an adult film star or adult film actress because porn star i don't know I, I don't call myself a star i just i do what i i do what i love to do and there are people who like to pay me for it <laughs> that's really the the best way to describe it Hey, Jordan Harbinger here of The Jordan Harbinger Show. Subscribe to the only show that will show you how to apply the world's greatest ideas from the most striking minds. We've got spies and CEOs, athletes and authors from Kobe Bryant to Malcolm Gladwell, Tony Hawk and Howie Mandel, and the chairman of Google, founders of LinkedIn and Instagram, antiquity smugglers, con men, brilliant scientists, national heroes, and even the head of the CIA. Come join and have a listen for yourself. Subscribe right now to The Jordan Harbinger Show, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you're listening now. So you're do you you got into that you're in this um you're married in your in this cuckolding marriage right so where did it, this all begin because I think you guys are you've been married for a long time right yes so we've been together for over twenty years and married almost eighteen at this point so we have been together a very long time which is a very nice way to kind of build a foundation when you're going to do cuckolding. And honestly, we just started as swinging. Uh, we started as swingers because I was very young and liked to fuck. And um, so, you know, got to fulfill those urges somewhere. So we started with swinging and then I had my first black cock in 03, which or 04, which was actually before we got married. And that's a great story. Everybody, you know, who's read the Drew uh, Martinson Queen of Spades interview knows the story of a, a friend of my husband's who I wanted to be with. So <laughs> that was that was a good a good introduction. And you know what? I I, I never went back. I <laughs> literally never went back. That's absolutely one hundred percent true for me. That's all I like. That's what I crave. That's what I want. <laughs> Yeah, I feel you on that. <laughs> I mean, not all cuckolding relationships uh, include interracial as a component, but man, it is definitely popular in this lifestyle. It's a real thing for a lot of people, um, including myself and you. So do you have a Queen of Spades tattoo? I actually have three Queen of Spades tattoos at this point. Oh my God. So... <laughs> I have one on my back, which is my logo. I designed it. It's a spade with a yin yang in it. And, um, and so that's my logo. I designed it. I had it put on. And then recently I got sort of a other version of it on my arm. And then I have the traditional just black queen of spades with the white Q inside of it. And that is uh, right above my pussy. <gasps> no, <laughs> we have the same fucking tattoo in the same place. Oh my God. You have the, you have the, just the original one. Yes. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's right. I mean, it's right there. It's still, it leaves room for a little bit of hair if you want it, but if not, it doesn't look like it's floating too high above the pussy. It's in a really, it's in a good spot. Oh my God. I had no idea before this. Like I had no idea. I thought you, I thought I heard something about you having queen of space. Okay. I have three as well. I have three <laughs> queen of space tattoos and yes, I have the exact same tattoo in the exact same place right above my pussy. <laughs> That's awesome. That one's brand new for me. The one on my back, my original one I've had for several years since I first, you know, really got into the, uh, porn lifestyle but uh, the other two are very recent I just got them oh awesome yeah I started out with um the one above my pussy was the first one that I got and I was just like <laughs> oh I love this like I love it so much I had there's this epic picture out there this photo of like me straddling this guy in chastity and then it's just like my queen of space tattoo is like right there oh it's epic it's so good it's so good anyway I don't know I might have to steal that I might have to recreate that with my pip do it it is uh, there's something about like the um symbolism of just that that is so like <laughs> powerful oh my gosh I can't believe awesome. you have three I have a um I've got the queen of the uh regular queen of spades 
um, symbol on my ankle as well. And then I have a crown with spades around it on the back of my neck. So that's so funny. So yeah, that was like custom for me, the crown with the spades one. It, that's so interesting. I like the one on your arm. It's right near your wrist where you can see it, right? Exactly. And uh, it's a good place, you know, for wedding ring. My wedding rings become kind of famous in our in my lifestyle, my style of wedding ring. So everybody likes to see that. So you've got it all in a nice line. It looks very pretty. <laughs> everybody always asks me, Has any, does anyone say anything about your tattoos, like random people on the street? No. The, the So the one on my back is fairly covered all the time. Uh, so that one's not very visible. And even if I'm in a shirt where it, it's exposed, my hair is very long. So it is kind of getting this one on my, on my hand is a kind of a little social experiment to see if anyone will notice it, if anyone will comment on it. So far, no, uh, that has not happened to me. Not those. Now I do have tattoos that are somewhat famous with people who like me. I have a bunch of stars on my legs. Now those tattoos get complimented all the time, but being noticed from them, from that work, no, I've never had that happen. Isn't that amazing? So you do these videos. Do people like recognize you on the streets or? No, has not happened yet. And if they do, I mean, they've never, you know, had the balls to come up to me and say something. Um, okay. So you guys started out swinging and I think that's a pretty common story that I've heard in the in the lifestyle from couples who've been married a long time. It was like that was kind of like their entrance way into the non-monogamy world. And then it's so interesting to hear this that often it happens where the guy is like, oh, I actually really like seeing her with others. And that's hot as fucking sexy. And damn, maybe that's all I really want and need because it's that hot and sexy. So was, was that what it was like for you guys? Basically, except we we sort of started non-monogamous. We actually met when I was a stripper on stage. He was a customer. Our relationship just started out different than your traditional vanilla monogamous. It, it always started out different. In fact, the only time you know we were monogamous is when we were trying to have a child. Otherwise, we've really never practiced monogamy in the marriage at all. So it started with swinging and we would both swing. And then it turned into black cock. And then it turned into, he just enjoys sitting back and watching, watching me be pleased, watching the pleasure that they give me. And before we were even doing the porn, he was doing pictures for himself, for us to look at later, for fun. You know, we have all these pictures of just from my swinging days. So it just, yes, it just slowly evolved into that. It became, I met somebody in the industry who's like, you would do great. You're already doing it. You already love black cock. You're already enjoying it. Why not really make money for doing what you love. And I know it's so corny because everybody's like, oh, that's the secret to life. Make money doing what you love. Um, but uh, this is something I, I love to do. So it's it's great that I've got fans who like to watch me do it. So you guys started you, right off the bat into like the whole non-monogamy outside of the box kind of relationship. We're talking like 18 years ago, right? Over 20 for, yeah, for dating, 21 something years ago at this point. So that was very different back then. Like it's way more mainstream swinging and stuff like that and way more mainstream now, even cuckolding. But like back then, that must have been a thing, <laughs> a real thing. <laughs> it was. I mean, you did have swinging clubs, you know, little dark clubs that you would find in certain areas that maybe seemed a little sketchy, but you would go and sign and find like-minded people. Uh, but, you know, oftentimes it would something, you know, just be bars, you know, looking at, oh, he looks good, you know, maybe him. And then, you know, the, those early websites, Adult Friend Finder, SDC, you know, all of those were really how we, I really started, especially when we got into the black cocks, being able to filter and look at exactly what I want and what I need. And so, yeah, it just started from there. And now being who I am now, I, you know, 
they they come to me now. <laughs> so how much of your what you do in your relationship as far as like who you fuck and your preferences and the, just even the cuckolding thing or sexual denial or a, 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 anything like that, all of your 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 sexual dynamic, how much of that is directed by you and how much of it is directed by Pip, your husband? So the desires come from Pip, the direction comes from me. Okay. So once he told me this desire, it's my job to work on giving the direction and telling him what to do because that's part of his desire. And so that's, you know, part of not cuckolding is shaming, but the cuckolding is love. And that's how he wants it. And so that's how I give it to him. Um, I direct him. I have his, the key to his chastity device is on an anklet that I wear. And when I want him to be locked up for any amount of time, it doesn't matter. I just hand him the anklet. I said, here you go. You know what to do with this. And sometimes just that little thing will make it hard for him to get into chastity because that little bit will be like, oh, she said something about it and get him excited. And I'll be like, nope, take a cold shower and get locked up. And then, you know, as soon as he's locked up, I have, I have lists, I call it a pip list. And I just start writing things out and he has no idea how long he's locked up for. It might be days, it might be weeks. And he has no, he has no control over it. So that's that. And that's how he likes it. And that's how I love it. I tell him what to do. I direct him and he has to make my life easier. He serves me. That's his job. I love it. Then the reason why I ask is because I often uh, hear that husbands want this so badly. They want their wife to do this so badly. They want her to have three lovers a week and they have to look this certain way. And, and she's, they want, he wants them to do these certain positions and like, it's literally directed by the husband so often from what I've heard. And I'm like, Really, this should be directed by the woman, right? This is, yes, you, your husband has this desire. And yes, you know, he enjoys it. But you're also doing this entirely for you, too. Like, this is not just a, a like a chore for you to do, right? You actually enjoy this. So I think there's a big difference there. Yeah, the mini Spielberg effect. Yes. <laughs> yes. And and it, it, it just because, it, you know, it does it still happens. And sometimes I need that because I will get what Pip has termed uh, black dick drunk. And I will just start fucking and forget that I am doing content. Like I need to look at the camera. I need to, you know, yes, like squeezing onto him really tight and grinding and riding hard might feel great, but you know, people want to see my boobs. Like I can't do that for 30 straight minutes, no matter how much I want to. <laughs> so you, I do kind of need that because I will forget. I get in the middle of it and all I want to do, and especially if I'm with, like, I have a lover, a king, a boyfriend in this lifestyle. Um, he's Demon Dick J. You can look him up. And so especially when the two of us are together, it's very easy to forget that we're also doing content that people love to watch. And part of it, people love to watch our passion together because we're so into each other. But yeah, you want it to be for yourself. You want it to be for your own enjoyment. But when I'm making content, sometimes I need a reminder of, you know, honey, <laughs> I know you're having a good time, but can you roll your eyes forward and just you know, give me a smile for a second? And then the eyes can be rolled back into your head again. <laughs> Oh my God. Can I ever relate? Like, <laughs> um, but okay. So that's really cool. I wanted to ask you about that. So if you're doing content with a, a bull or a lover, whatever you want to call them that you really do enjoy being with that has got to translate to the screen in a different way than like just being put into a, a scene with some other talent or whatever, you know, like, that's got to translate differently, right? Absolutely, it does. I mean, especially 
you know, first times with somebody can just, just like the swinging world can sometimes be awkward. You're learning each other's rhythms and, and stuff like that. But if you find somebody you really connect with, and there are several men in the lifestyle and in the business that I have been with a number of times. I've filmed with them and I've been off camera with them. So it's, you know, when you find somebody like that, yeah, it just makes it better. And it, and people really enjoy those performances. And part of it, people, you know, really love to know that I'm enjoying myself and that when they see me with somebody um, like Mr. Jordan, Jonathan Jordan, when they see me with him over and over and over again, they know that I'm going back to him for a very specific reason. And I, I've got several, I've got several of them in my life. Uh, DFW Knight is my partner and who I kind of started this business with met him in the swinging world and I've known him at least 15 years, I would wow. say. And uh, so, and then, um, Shane Diesel, another really big name in the industry, we filmed together a couple of times and then we've met off camera. I happened to be in town where he was and he happened to be free and we had a lovely evening together. <laughs> That's awesome. So you've got this like professional side and then you've got this personal private side and it seems like the lines are kind of blurred in between, right? Even when you're shooting content, it sounds like everybody wants to know when they're watching these videos, how much of this is her actually enjoying this? What is that kind of running commentary that is going through your mind when you're doing these scenes with these, with these guys and like, how much of it is real and how much of it is putting on a show? I, it's real because if I'm putting on a show, it doesn't look good. And I don't put, I don't put that out there. Like it, it has to be real. And the only thing going through my mind usually is fuck me harder. I want to come. I want to come again. Um, maybe we should change positions so I can come that way. You know, this, <laughs> those are the things running through my head is, how good it feels, you know, how much I love just to be pounded, especially when you get a good guy, you know, there's nothing like a good oh. black cock pounding. <laughs> I know. I know. Does Pip ever join you in these videos or is he always just like off the camera? He, he's usually behind the camera. Uh, that's usually he's he's doing all the filming and then the we've dabbled in a little bit letting him be on the camera but he is a cuck he is my pip so he's on the camera only to clean out my pussy which is good because that's what he loves to do so uh he likes to clean me out after i've gotten a really good load of black cock and been fucked and then just completely exhausted and worn out and that is his favorite taste his favorite time <laughs> <laughs> that is hot as fuck <laughs> See, it's hot as fuck because it's content that you guys are making, right? But it's it's also real. Like, this is your husband. Like, this is not just some dude who's playing cuck for this scene, you know? That's so cool. I really, I really like that. I am a little bit surprised that, like, that most or all of it is you actually, like, enjoying it and not necessarily putting on a show. Because, like, I, like, I haven't seen your videos, so I don't know, but, like, for some of the videos that I've seen when it comes to cuckolding, I feel it's hard for me to feel like this is genuine. I, it's hard for me to really get into that and feel like, oh, she's really enjoying that. <laughs> like, I feel like she's making those noises in that face because the camera's on her right now. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> it's hard for me to get well into it. It's, I mean, and sure, it happens from time to time that you're putting on a show, but it's more in the lines of, you know, I'm, he's behind me doing me doggy style and I'm not, I'm not thinking about the face I'm making. And it's just like, oh yeah, smile for the camera. Yeah. Smile, smile. Okay. I gotta come. I gotta come. Um, so <laughs> you do, there is a little putting on the show, but if you watch my cuckolding where you actually do see Pip in it, you'll t you can you can totally tell that it's a hundred percent real because that is my that is my Pip that is my cuck and he is there to serve me, and so that I think that always comes out across comes genuine. Yeah, see that's interesting because I have watched. There's this uh, 
oh my god there's this video i don't know very many porn stars it's funny i come across guys in this lifestyle single cucks or wannabe cucks or whatever guys who are just obsessed with interracial porn they know every fucking person in this industry they know every single porn star they they will rattle off this long list of names and they'll be like oh yeah her and blah 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 and like it's like it's like a they they keep track of it like like uh, it's a sport like sports st- stats you know they they're like oh she did that video with him and blah 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 and uh, there's that scene that was like so amazing no I'm not like that I know like maybe three people <laughs> I can list maybe three people but there was this one video that was I don't know the chick but the guy I found out his name is Julio Gomez I think is his name um. Big dick, like <laughs> so big, and he's fucking her, and you can tell that she's like, "Whoa, <laughs> you know, genuine, genuine reaction to this huge dick." And because of that, I was like watching this video, going, "Damn!" Because I can put myself in her shoes as soon as I know that she's feeling the same feeling that I've had with a guy who was like really, really big. So I needed that kind of like, as soon as I I saw that, I saw her, (laughs) you can tell anytime a woman is getting her cervix pounded, you know, (laughs) that face (laughs) where she's just like, oh my God, for me, it's not too much. It's, it's not, it's, it's really on the border of, of overwhelming and too much, but it's, it is that feeling that I really enjoy. I'm sure for you as well, for all size Queens out there, um, but that video was hot as fuck. And after that, I was like, I don't know who that guy is, but I would love to fuck him. Like, oh, my God. And then there's, um, uh, I think his name is Dread. Um, I saw some pictures or a video with him. And I was like, damn, <laughs> this guy's huge. And, of course, Shane Diesel. Like, he's, you know, everybody knows Shane Diesel. But... I've seen pictures of his dick and I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> so Harmony, hook a girl up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The men I know in this in this I'm kinda like you. I don't really I don't really watch a lot of porn. I watch some of mine sometimes, but the people I only know in this industry are people I've filmed with generally. <laughs> that's just how that's just who I know. Who your becomes your little circle. So how has that changed? How has that whole kind of um, con- like uh, porn landscape changed for you? It's OnlyFans has opened it up for not just me, but for anybody who wants to be a creator or sell whatever they want to sell on that. It doesn't have to be porn, obviously. And it's just made it so much easier to put out the content, to connect with the fans like, and to see what people like and to see the money coming in that is part of why you do it so when you have a website of your own which i did it's so much work i mean it's it just it takes a a lot of work to run an entire website and the only fans has really streamlined it and it really helps connect you with people in the lifestyle, people curious about the lifestyle, and my fans. My fans really love knowing that I, I'm i here. They're really talking to me, and, and they, they really do love that. They love that personal connection, and I'm happy to give it to them. I've been sharing my love for this beautiful relationship dynamic for, well, years now, and I am beyond thrilled to announce that finally there's a matchmaking service for single women and single men who want a loving cuckolding relationship. It's called Venus Connections. It's a personalized matchmaking service and three-week educational program that's safe, private, and individualized for what you want. Women, you no longer need to endure the headache of filtering through blank profiles and dealing with online creeps 
And men, you can stop wasting time on those fake profiles and women with all sorts of ulterior motives. Venus Connections works for you to find what you want. You can learn more at venusconnections.com. That's venusconnections.com. You deserve the relationship of your dreams. So do you help kind of like um, role play a fantasy kind of thing with them just to see how they like it and and for them to see if they like it and 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 help them that way? I, that is one way. I also, I help them every, everything from even the very beginning steps, yeah. teaching them how to measure themselves for a chastity device, recommending, because Pip has been through many chastity devices and, you know, recommending the ones that we like the best. I've actually had a man who wanted to be a cuck who was too big. There don't have chastity devices for a man that big. And despite his size, he wanted to be cuckold. So it's, it's everything from, you know, teaching them the very basics. This is what you get. This is the size you need. This is how it should fit. This is how it should look on you. And then, you know, what it takes for me to be your cuckoldress uh, from sending me the key to monthly donations and checking in. And then there can be fantasy play some really like the humiliation part of it. And so we'll, we'll try that out and see how they like that part. And a lot of times I get back, you know, you could be meaner. You can, <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I, I'm trying to do a balance between walking them through this new kink for them and helping to, them to explore something. And I really hope they like it or at least explore things and find what they like eventually. And so I feel like I'm trying to help them with that. But on the other side, I have to, you know, look at them and be like, your dick is so small. I'd never even <laughs> touch it. So <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a fine balance. My, my life is all about balance. Like you said, the gray lines and yeah, my life is all about trying to find a right balance between all of my very blurred lines. <laughs> How did you come across that or decide on the name Pip for your husband? It seems like such an unusual name. Twitter well, it came, it originally started because his very first chastity device was bright pink. And so I started saying he looks pretty in pink. Oh, Pip, and pretty in pink. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so it it shortened to that. And then eventually I actually did do a Twitter vote to see a couple of other ideas, what people liked uh, for his name and Pip won. So pretty and pink it is. No, oh. <laughs> that was an older chastity device. Uh, we don't, uh, he doesn't wear the pink one much anymore, but that is definitely where it started. <laughs> That's so cool. I kind of had a feeling there'd probably be a uh, story behind that one. <laughs> <laughs> And he's locked up all the time, right? Like, do you, is it like full, complete sexual denial? And how long has that been for? He is locked up all the time, uh, except for extreme situations where something's going on and he can't be. But for the most part, he is locked up all the time. And we've been doing this for a couple of years now. Oh, wow. Five, five, six years, maybe. Uh Maybe about five years. Oh, he, he's like, I, I know exactly how long. Yeah. yeah he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right here. So, and you're uh, like, yeah, I don't know. It could be two years. It could be five. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Long time. So it's, uh, but yeah, we definitely do the sexual denial. Um, you know, he gets pleasure through watching me get pleasure from other cocks, not his. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And that's what, that's all he, that's what he needs to feel fulfilled, right? Yes. That's, yeah. he loves it. That is what he loves. He sends me, you know, he told me I need to go visit my boyfriend. Like, you need to go visit Jay. You haven't seen him in a while. You need to go out there and go see him and spend several days, you know, getting a, a good fucking. Cause when we're together, we just fuck for hours and all day long and several days in a row. And so it's, it's like, you need to, you need to go do that. Yes. You're, you're right. I do need to go do that. Have you ever gotten fucked so hard that like you needed an ice pack on your pussy after? 
Yes. Absolutely. In fact, we have pictures of it, of me sitting after a shoot with a, a bag of ice, just and I'm just sitting there. Uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. I know. You just had your fifth cock in a day when you did the ice. Oh, that's, yeah. I had, had a two gangbang and a three gangbang with Richard Mann. Oh, that's right. The ice pack for me was after two gangbangs. Um, oh, no wonder. No a, wonder. <laughs> yeah, I did a, a three man gangbang and then a two man or gangbang or threesome, whatever you want to call that. And those were both in the same day. And so it was after that that I had to just take a breather and get an ice pack. And yeah. <laughs> Your pussy was tapping out. It's like, I'm done. I'm yeah, done. <laughs> I'm tapped out. <laughs> Okay. And you said that you're a big fan of the podcast. So um, has there been things that I've discussed or guests who I've had on the show who have where it's really resonated with things that are going on in your own life, in your own relationship? Honestly, I haven't heard a podcast yet that you've done that hasn't touched on something that is either currently happening in my relationship and life or has happened in the past. I mean, everything you talk about from cuckolding, you know, real cucks versus the ones who think they are, or maybe it's just in their backpack of kink, everything from that to uh, wounded bulls, uh, you know, Love Drew at Spades Magazine, uh, love the FLRs with Key. I want to, uh, I need to do some more research on FLRs because it's definitely, um, obviously in a cuckolding relationship it's what we're in but i want to do more research on it i want to learn more about it to make me a better cuckoldress uh so yeah that's on definitely on my list from uh that podcast so so many of it rings true i know people that have been blackmailed you talked about that in one of your podcasts uh, obviously, I'm a queen of spades, and so um, I have, you know, I, that podcast also rings true to me when we talked about the history of the word uh, with Drew. Yeah. They, they're, they're all, they're all in there. They all, you, you kind of talk about my life. <laughs> they're, they're all, <laughs> they all apply in one way or another. I, I can connect with every single one <laughs> that I've listened to. Oh, and, and also the fall, the falling in love with your bull was a great one for both me and Pip because it, it can happen and it did happen to me. And so it, it was a good thing to touch on because sometimes that's beyond people's control. Okay. Going back to something that you commented on right in the beginning that I want a little bit more detail about that I'm circling back to on purpose is uh, you mentioned something about your first experience with a black guy and that it was, this is a story that a lot of people have heard, but I have not heard this. So I want to know the juicy details. Like what was it like for you? It, it was, it was an interesting first experience. He was, is longtime friend of Pip's and it started with, uh, a compliment. He's a very attractive black man, of course, uh, very athletic, played a lot of sports, very smart, very confident, almost too confident, depending on who you might talk to. But he complimented my ass. We were walking away from something and I was up ahead and he was walking with Pip and he complimented my ass. And Pip told me that. And I I I just like a flow of heat and wet went right to my pussy. And I'm like, oh, he, he, he mentioned me? He said something about me? So after that, he, he became a goal. It did actually take some time <laughs> to convince him that like, yes, no, no, this is okay. And this is definitely something I want to do. It actually, the first connection was uh, after a sports game that I had watched him play I got into his car and we just drove to a parking lot and I gave him a blowjob until he came right down my throat and that that was the very first time and a uh, black cock uh, in my hands in my mouth and I'm like oh yeah definitely gonna have to have more of this <laughs> He, he he was 
big and uh, he, it was it was great. And it was still probably another month after that before we actually fucked and, you know, took me back to my place and bent me over the arm of a couch. And it was great fun. <laughs> there is something so powerful and so intoxicating when you have like this big, heavy black dick in your hand. And like, he's just like, you know, towering above you. And you're just like, oh my God, there's something about that. <laughs> Ooh. Anyway, it's getting hot in here. You've heard me talk about cuckolding love. And I think you've mentioned before that uh, you, you definitely agree with that sentiment that cuckolding is love. What does it mean to you? It's... It's love for both of us. That's what it means to me. His cuckolding, when he is locked up, he's being my cuck, he's showing his love for me. He does my hair. He picks out my outfits. He, he waits on me hand and foot to support me and show my love. Oh, I you know need my beverage refilled or I'm hungry. I need you know fruit peeled or he's showing his love by taking care of me in all aspects, not just the sexual ones. And I'm showing my love back to him when I'm giving him that satisfaction that he needs. It's not. I'm not shaming him. I'm not degrading him. He, Pip is in all ways in regular life an alpha male. And I think you find that to be very true among men who want to be cucked. It, they, you know, when you have control everywhere else, sometimes it's good to lose control. But when you do it with love, it's great because you can lose control, but still have the love, still know that you're safe, still know that you can push boundaries, you can have fun. And it's all, it's all out of love because everybody's enjoying it and you're taking care of each other's needs and everybody's having a great time. And that's, it's a great way to show love between two people and have a great emotional fulfillment and sexual fulfillment. That's amazing. It is very much a two way street and it's very much a feeding off of each other and fulfilling each other's needs. When, and, and I think that that's the reason why I have uh, been so vocal about that aspect of this kind of relationship is because the kink part, the, the, um, the humiliation part, the, all of that part is so loud out there and it's so like attractive when it comes to attracting uh, people's attention and stuff like that. And it is this, you know, it's a very, it is a big part of what people think about cuckolding, but there's needs to be balance. There needs to be this understanding that this is a real relationship, that this is not just about the sex with her and this guy. People just focus entirely on that and like, it's not just about that. It's actually about this like really amazing relationship that you have. And in fact, like that is just as important, probably I'm assuming I need to ask you just as important as your relationship with your husband, right? You're like, the, yes, the, being able to fuck all these black guys and get all this dick and, you know, have all this fun is, is great. But this amazing kind of relationship that you have is probably just as important. Absolutely. It's absolutely because you can't you really can't have one without the other, and, at least not for me and not be fulfilled. Uh, because if you're just focusing on the kink part, you're losing so much, uh, I think, in cuckolding if you're just focused on that. And yeah, that's the that's the shiny object that everybody looks at. And that's what gets all the attention. Uh, but it's not it's it's not the reality. And, you know, the reality is for people who live in this lifestyle, you do it because you love it and you love each other. And this is just one of the ways how you show that affection and love. And it's it's not for everybody. It doesn't have to be for everybody, but it certainly shouldn't it certainly shouldn't be looked down on or, you know, we've used this term, no kink shaming. Um, so you it, it but it really is a. It can be a great lifestyle if you choose it. 
I get often, um, or I hear stories about, or I hear from the women who are not sure about this, where they're hearing about it and they're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Do you have any advice for those women who are kind of like on the fence about whether or not they would want to try something like this? Yes. <laughs> I think my advice would be first off, take it slow. Yeah. You're in no rush. You know, there's, this is not a race. This is your journey. And your journey might take years. Your journey might take hours. And then you might bail. Uh, who knows? <laughs> but this this is your journey. And if you're thinking about it, how I really love it is my own empowerment. Because as, as a woman, that is just something, you know, we all want. But I think we all struggle with in a very male dominant nominated patriarchal society. So the empowerment that comes with it really gives you, gives you a confidence uh, that maybe you didn't even know you were lacking. You already felt like you were a very powerful woman, but this is in a different way. And being powerful sexually is very gratifying, very freeing, and should be experienced by all women. And I don't think that it is. Yeah. So if you're, think if you're thinking about this and you're kind of on the fence, maybe take the perspective of, you know, I am in control. This is me and this is my power and how do I want to use it? And then you're listening to your partner's fantasies and, and, you can incorporate that into yourself and your power and you, you do you, you know, there's no right way to do cuckolding. There's no, you know, you, whatever you and your partner want to do, that's the right way to do it. So take it slow, make it your own. You don't, you don't have to do it like I do it. You don't have to do it like Venus does it. You do it like you do it. Just like you fuck, you know, just like you cook. You do it how you do it. All right. I think th on that note, that is amazing. I love the advice that you have to, to give to women. That's incredible. And I agree with all of it. It's so important. Um, let's wrap this up for now. Where do you want people to go? Where should people go to find out more about you, your content, and how they can interact with you? Absolutely. You can find me on Twitter. It's simply girl with spade tattoo. It's girl W spade tattoo. And same for my OnlyFans. And you can find me there. Please follow. Uh, it's actually free to follow my OnlyFans right now. You can DM me. You can ask for specific requests. I just spent all day today making custom videos for fans. And I love, you know, giving them what they want. So find me, shoot me a message. I'm all ears. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining me on the show today. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Venus. It's been awesome. All right. That's going to be it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you stick around and on Patreon, you can listen to our bonus episode, rapid fire, naughty questions with Miss Harmony California and I. And then don't forget to go to venuscuckoldress.com, of course, the hub for everything cuckolding. You can subscribe for the podcast. You can ask a question for the show. You can read the Venus blog. And of course, there's tons of cuckolding resources for you. Super helpful. Don't forget to listen to the Venus Cuckoldress podcast on Full Swap Radio every Tuesday, 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. Central Time. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. We'll talk real soon. 